our final speaker of uh, this afternoon is uh, my colleague Stein Alstains, who is curator in the Department of Drawings and Prints and in charge of the Northern European Drawings uh, since 2007. Before joining us, he was curator at the Fritz Lucht Collection in Paris. He's an authority on Northern European Drawings of the 16th, 17th centuries. He co-organized the exhibitions Paysage de France, dessiné par Lambert Domer, <laughs> et les artistes hollandais et flamands des 16e et 17e siècles at the Luke Collection in 2009, and also more recently, Durer and Beyond, Central European Drawings Before 1700 in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. He wrote on the drawings in the Metz exhibition on Jan Gossart in 2010, and on the drawings in P the present Peter Kuka exhibition. He also recently published an article in Master Drawings, in a recent issue of Master Drawings, on Peter Kuka's drawings. Uh, the title of his talk is Newly Identified Drawings draftsman in the circle of Peter Kuka van Alst. Stein. Uh, thank you, Nadine. To a certain degree, a monographic treatment of an art artist always is a reaction to similar previous efforts. For my colleagues and me working on Grand Design, the previous effort we reacted to, if you will, in preparation of our exhibition was Georges Marlier's La Renaissance Flamande, Pierre Cook d'Alost of 1966. I doubt I will shock many people in this audience by calling Marlier's book less a critical study than a useful compilation. Our exhibition and its catalogue presents, I think, a substantially altered view of Cuckoo's oeuvre in nearly every uh, different field of this artist's activities. At its center, not only in the exhibition, but I think also in our understanding of, of Cuckoo's entire oeuvre, um, are his tapestry designs, which Marlier treats it in a relatively short chapter at the end of his book. On the other hand, the number of his paintings, which occupied the larger part of La Renaissance Flamande, has been much reduced by Mary Nainsworth's reassessment of the core group of pictures. Finally, there are the drawings, and here I should apologize for also bringing up, uh, which Nadine almost already did, a recent article of mine in uh, the journal Master Drawings, you see the cover uh, here on the right, which contains a catalog of just around 40 drawings accepted by me as autographed works by Kuka, as well as about 15 cartoons or cartoon fragments in the making of which Kuka and his workshop must have been involved. Although a reduced corpus compared to Marlier's, my catalog of drawings also includes several sheets which were, known, which were unknown to him. Some of these surfaced after the publication of this book. Drawings in Mettinger in Germany. were discovered only in the last two years. This drawing from the Passion series, which I just mentioned, was brought to my attention um, by a French dealer. This surprising edition uh, I found in the princely collection in Wolfeck in Germany and was previously published um, as by Hans Holbein the Younger. This fascinating drawing in Amsterdam, which has already been uh, mentioned several times, and finally this sketch in Berlin, which I discovered in the Kupferstichkabinett Zweite Garnitur. Before I discuss any um, drawings more by more or less independent artists from Kuka's Circle, which is really uh, the subject I want to um, uh, introduce today, I should bring up a number of sheets which I consider to be workshop copies, uh, that is, copies which originate in uh, Kuka's workshop and which complement the autograph core of uh, uh, Kuka's drawings. Among these is a drawing at the Louvre here at Upper Right, presented in the exhibition, which compares very well, I think, with the Berlin drawing just mentioned, just mentioned and which gives a fuller idea of Kuka's late, I would say severe, somewhat severe graphic uh, style. Other workshop copies are, of, diff are of, the, of a different nature and hint at the highly systematic way in which Kuka's workshop must have functioned, such as this pair of replicas of a lost preliminary drawing 
for Kuka's Conversion of Soul from the St. Paul Tapestry series. I should note that these drawings do not um, repeat the composition of the, of the larger, better known and, and, and uh, drawing in, uh, at the Vianney in London, which is presented in the exhibition, but they are of a smaller size, less detailed, and they really belong to the earlier uh, development of uh, the composition. Um, other examples, these two copies uh, at upper right and, uh, and uh, the lower part of the slide, uh, two copies related to the Seven Deadly Sins, which are at Yale and at Bowdoin College, um, of which the latter, the one at Bowdoin, uh, repeats the original sheets at upper left here, which is in Paris and which is presented in the exhibition. Inter interestingly, a fragment of a replica uh, by the same workshop hand is dated 1537. This is a drawing in Frankfurt also related to uh, the Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, it's dated 1537, as you can see maybe here, uh, clearly in the ink, uh, the brown ink in which uh, the drawing is made. Uh, 1537, which must be several years after the date of Kuka's original designs, uh, suggesting that these copies of the Petit Patrons of Kuka's tapestry designs remain relevant even years after the cartoons were made and the first editions were woven. Such copies exist for all periods of Kuka's activity and provide us with some graphic evidence of his design process, even in cases where no original is preserved at all, as, for instance, for the Caesar series, which Tom Campbell, in an article of uh, about 10 years ago, reconstructed on the basis of some later weavings, 17th century weavings, and a few extant drawings, including uh, one of these two workshop copies, um, which uh, are the only thing that uh, inform us about what Kuka's original design, now lost, must have looked, uh, looked like. The drawing uh, in the upper part of the slide is... Oh, I'm a bit confused. No, the drawing in the lower part of the slide, slide, slide which is not in a private collection in Brussels, but in the Grafische Sammlung in Munich, is presented in the exhibition. The... Um, I in included such workshop copies uh, just mentioned in a separate section at the end of my, my catalog in Master Drawings, but of the uh, copy you see here at the right, I became only aware um, after its publication. The drawing in Bremen, the one to the right, is a contemporary version of lesser quality related to the one, the drawing in Cologne, to your left. While I initially thought the Cologne drawing was itself not an original, the comparison with the Bremen sheet made me rethink my opinion, and I now believe that the drawing in Cologne could be an early drawing by Kuke, indeed, probably the earliest one preserved, uh, which serves an, as an example how these workshop copies can, can help us or have helped me in, in any case uh, to, to um, assess the quality of, of um, other drawings. Although, as said, I included workshop copies in my catalog, I have tried to distinguish them um, from drawings of which I don't believe the design is due to Kuka himself, many of which were still accepted by Marlier, and I now really come to um, the, the proper subject of my talk. By excluding these drawings not, after, not by Kuka or not after uh, Kuka's designs, I created a pool, if you want, of anonymous works, and I feel it is my obligation towards these works now uh, to discuss them, not in the last place, because quite a few of them are of genuine, uh, genuine quality and interest. I, I am very conscious that my talk, talk is the last one of today's prog program, as well as of uh, the entire symposium, and I would like to keep it very short and light, and I hope you will uh, look at the uh, following slideshow and my comments um, very much as you would uh, watch uh, television on a Sunday evening, which is probably what the American East Coast uh, is doing at this very moment. I will restrict myself to those drawings that I feel can be situated in Kuka's more or less immediate uh, circle, leaving aside the drawings of more fully independent artists, such as Jan Zwart van Groningen, a northern Netherlandish art artist who was active in Antwerp, and whose graceful style often recalls that of Kuka. In fact, in the um, example from the British Museum, which I'm showing here, uh, which represents a scene from the story of Joshua, one is very clearly reminded of um, Kuka's designs for the Joshua series, and uh, the connection between Zwart, one of the really, um, really most accomplished draftsmen in the Netherlands uh, in these dec early decades of the 16th century, really deserves uh, more attention than it has gotten in the past. 
I will also exclude um, the drawings of that enigmatic draftsman, the master of Liechtenstein, Matt Kavler reminded me of uh, him yesterday, who seems to have been a southern Netherlandish artist from the mid-16th century, who was exposed to influences from Germany or Switzerland, from Italy, possibly from Fontainebleau, but most importantly, it seems, also uh, exposed to the influence of Kuka. The drawings that I will instead focus on are all anonymous works. Some, such as this sheet at the University of Göttingen, appears, uh, appear to contribute to Kuka's main field of activity, the, the design of tapestries. By a different hand, but undoubtedly also in intended as tapestry designs, is a pair in a Brussels private collection on themes from Ovid. This one illustrating the story of Jupiter and the cruel king of Arcadia, Lycaon, who is transformed into a wolf in the right background. And uh, this one in the same private collection in Brussels, uh, illustrating the stor story of Callisto, who Jupiter is about to rape in the left background of this composition. The style and technique of both drawings, although they are not by the same hand, recall not only those of Kuka, but to a certain extent also those of Bernard van Orle and artists from his circle. Uh, particularly uh, close in style and technique, I think, are three marvelous drawings at the uh, Louvre, of which I am showing one here, and of which another one, an, another one at, by the same hand is in the exhibition at the Met Metropolitan. Different in style, coarser, I would say, but probably also a tapestry design and related to Kuka's circle, is this work that appeared a few years ago on the German uh, art market. And what I think is remarkable about this group of tapestry designs is that they indicate that accomplished, but for us at least, entirely anonymous artists were active in a medium as costly as tapestries. Two drawings in the exhibition's uh, first gallery that um, um, uh, by artists from the circle of uh, Van Orley. I showed you uh, one of these before. Um, and uh, Ruben Zuckerberg has recently identified some tapestry designs, also anonymous ones, which um, uh, originate from Coxie's circle. So we have in the uh, direct surroundings of, of what uh, Guy Del Marcel earlier called the Holy Trinity of tapestry design in uh, the Netherlands, we have very talented artists working um, in, in a costly medium as tapestries whose no names seem to have uh, uh, been completely lost to us. As in Kuka's own oeuvre, uh, drawings that can be recognized as designs for paintings are rare. Among the exceptions are these two sheets with scenes from the story of St. Christ Christopher, which Wouter Kluck connected with uh, each other early in 1994. The middle drawing is at the Lucht Collection, the one to the left is at the British Museum. The central panel illustrates well the draftsman, um, I would say, exaggerated interpretation of Kuka's style. Elongated bodies, extremely flat feet, small hats, architecture on antica. And these features, and I would say the pronounced lower backs of the figures, allowed me to attribute another drawing to the same uh, hand, which for convenience I have here baptized the master of uh, St. Christopher. This drawing previously given to Kuka himself, which is at the Getty and which could be uh, a design or at least a fragment of a design for a painting as well. Two more drawings, both also in London, evidently belonging together and by the same hand, can be added to the growing body of works of uh, this master of St. Christopher, um, with whose uh, designs I think no other um, works have been uh, connected so far. Moving on from designs for tapestries and paintings to stained glass, I first want to bring up this trio of uh, church fathers, much uh, quieter in style than anything we have seen before. They may in fact not have so much to do with Kuka's circle, but I bring them up here because the Saint Jerome, the drawing at uh, upper left in the Lucht collection, was published under his name as recent, was published under his name first by Max Friedländer and uh, published again more recently uh, in the 1990s as a work by Kuka. A year or so ago, the Metropolitan Muse Museum was able to acquire St. Ambrose to uh, the right in the slide, and even more recently, Augustine, uh, now also in the Lucht collection, appeared on the market. And if anyone comes across the missing St. Saint Gregory the Great, I would be very grateful to hear from you. As said, these drawings by the master of the church fathers, if I may call him so, uh, may not have all that much to do with Kuka, but designs for stained glass panels and especially designs for glass roundels from the majority of drawings from Kuka's circle. By far the largest group can be attributed, 
attributed to an artist, or rather a group of artists, who I like to call the master of the clinging draperies, if you uh, apology, apologize uh, the uh, silly name. His, or rather their work, if it is uh, a group of artists rather than one single artist, his uh, work varies in refinement, but displays a characteristic figure style and use of ornament, which make clear, I think, that they must originate uh, within the same circle. Among the best and best known drawings in this style are a group of roundel designs I'm showing to you here of allegorical triumphs preserved in various print rooms, including in the Rijksprintkabinet in Amsterdam and in the Albertina in Vienna. Class roundels related to the drawings have been preserved as well, and they are of comparable high quality. Most of these uh, glass panels are um, at the Rijks Museum, and I'm showing you two here. They bring, of course, uh, in terms of composition in mind, somewhat the uh, seven deadly sins, which follow the same uh, general format, and indeed, Cuckoo's tapestry designs uh, could have inspired this artist. Although in the past, these designs have been thought to be works by Cuckoo himself, among others by Georges Marlier, who has an entire section on, on uh, this series, they are now generally considered to originate in uh, the artist's workshop or circle. Many other roundels can be associated with this artist or his workshop. Among these uh, two roundels, um, also in Amsterdam, from a series with scenes from the life of St. John the Baptist. Other drawings in a comparable style, such as this sheet recently acquired also by the Metropolitan Museum, may not be quite as beautifully executed and intricately designed, but they nonetheless belong in style and technique and in purpose to this group. I could add many more designs to the group, not all, by the way, for roundels, but also some for small rectangular glass panels, and also some of these panels, not only drawings, but also glass panels uh, that can be associ associated with this workshop have been preserved. The workshop's activity may even not um, may even extend to the production of monumental glass, and in fact, when looking yesterday at the marvelous windows from Herkenrode Abbey, now in Litchfield, England, I wondered if their design should not be as associated too with my master of the clinging draperies. His style is a highly, sorry, his style is a highly mannered interpretation of Cuckoo's style of the early 1530s, whose elongated, gesticulating, tiptoeing figures can easily be recognized in a great number of works. Somewhat more robust in style are works such as this drawing at the Morgan Library, or those by the author of a series of narrow drawings like this one in Amsterdam, others are in Harlem and other print rooms, illustrating uh, scenes from the Passion. The drapery style and the use of wash in passages such as the trees, uh, um, such as the smoke in this drawing, or the trees in a drawing such as this one in, in the Louvre, are very similar. and. Um, if I am not mistaken, this drawing, although it, it somewhat looks like the design for two uh, exterior panels of a triptych, uh, could also well be a, um, a design for a stained glass window with the, the lines, the parallel lines in the middle, indicating the construction or the, the support of the glass panel rather than uh, the division between two wings. A last drawing which I want to show you to you today, um, which is of comparable, rob the more robust style, is this one at the Groningen Museum in, Bru in Bruges. The, the heavy, stiff style betrays, sadly, it is a copy, possibly even a tracing, but I think it is interesting because uh, it is one of the very few signs and dated drawings in, in the group of drawings from uh, circles, from Cuckoo's Circle, um, and although I have not been able to uh, identify the monogram, you can maybe see it over here. There seems to be very clearly an L and something that looks like a C or more probably an O. Um, what is maybe even more interesting than a monogram is the date of 1549, which, um, which allows to prove that such designs more or less directly derived uh, from Cuckoo's early style uh, from around uh, 1530 were still produced toward the end of his life and possibly even beyond his death. I hope to have shown in this quick succession of uh, slides that some sense can be made of the chaos of drawings previously attributed to or otherwise associated with Kuka. No doubt, much more work must be done than I was able to do in this context, especially in connecting the drawings with works in other media. One preliminary and very cautious conclusion that can be drawn is that most of the anonymous artists discussed here seem each to have focused on a particular medium, tapestry, painting, or glass. If, as I think, some of them at some point in their career worked in Cuckoo's workshop, 
one can ask whether these specializations may reflect a way in which labor in the workshop of Kuku was divided among the many assistants that he must have employed and uh, the assistants who must have helped to um, he helped him to execute the many projects he was involved with. And this, I think, is, is comparable in a certain way to uh, the man, the Italian artist, who really uh, must uh, remain, I think, Kuka's great model, Raphael, who employed different specialists to manage the many varied projects he was involved in. We are still far from being able to confirm such a hypothesis for Kuka, but I believe drawings like the ones I presented to you today may help in clarifying that question. Thank you. <laughs>